Hi guys, this video is an overview of Ansible's concepts and terminology. We will have a look at what Ansible is and all of its components used within the software. We will quickly go over what Ansible is before we get into the terminology and the concepts about Ansible. And Ansible is a configuration, management, automation and orchestration platform which is used to configure and deploy systems and applications. You can manage absolutely any devices under Ansible. This can be Windows and Linux based systems, networking, security and storage infrastructure, even services within cloud environments. Basically any computer based technology and it has been commonly used to manage lots and lots of servers and other infrastructure devices within very large scale environments. And Ansible is maintained by Red Hat and although it's open source, commercial support is available if you purchase it. It actually comes in three main flavors or versions, which are the free version, which is called Ansible Core and is driven by a command line interface. And then there's a commercial version as well, which is known as Ansible Tower, which has a graphical user interface and a RESTful API package with it. And finally, there's an open source version of Ansible Tower, which is called Ansible AWX. So you get the benefits of Ansible Tower with a graphical user interface and it's free to use. But obviously you don't get any support with it if you have any issues. And Ansible uses a client server architecture. You install the Ansible software on a control node, which is the node that is used to perform operations on one or more managed nodes. And the best thing about Ansible is there's no software agent needed to be installed on the remote system or the managed device. As long as there is IP connectivity from the Ansible control machine server to the target device and SSH and Python are running as well on the machine and that is all that is needed for a Linux, Unix and networking operating system. The target server just needs to allow SSH write access from the Ansible control machine. And although Python is typically needed on the managed nodes, in some situations, depending on the vendor and the use of Ansible, Python may not be needed. For example, Ansible for Junos operating systems requires all tasks to run locally on the Ansible control node, and it uses the Junos XML API over netconf to interface with the devices running the Junos operating systems. So therefore, Python is not required when managing Junos operating systems. And WinRM is used with Ansible to connect to Windows-based devices. And for cloud-based environments, APIs are used to interact with the cloud-based services. So with the deployment of Ansible, there is for the control node, which is the machine that runs Ansible, you can use any machine with Python version 2.7 or Python version 3.5 and higher installed at this moment in time. But it's commonly installed on the Ubuntu distro platform. I've seen it commonly installed on that the most. And at this moment in time, Windows is not supported for the control node. The control node, by the way, is the management server, the Ansible management server. But some other alternatives to Ubuntu that are used for Ansible are Red Hat, Debian and CentOS operating systems. So all Linux, Unix based operating systems are fine for Ansible. And one other great thing about Ansible is there are pre-built configurations to manage your environment. There are pre-built Python scripts in the form of modules, roles, collections you can download from the Ansible Galaxy website. And you can use these within your own environment on a ton of infrastructure devices. Basically, you'll find content for doing things like provisioning the infrastructure, deploying applications and many of the other tasks you need for your environment. So you don't need to create things from scratch for many of your requirements. Moving on to terminology and concepts and looking at the Ansible components. The first one is the Ansible control node, which is in effect the Ansible management server. It's used to manage the other devices. So this is the machine that Ansible is installed upon. And it's used to manage the environment devices. And just to go over a few of the requirements for the control node. It's installed on a Linux based distribution and it needs Python running on the distribution as well. 
and this can be any machine that has Ansible installed upon it. So you can use any computer that has a Python installation as a control node. This can be served as laptops or desktops and you can have multiple control nodes if you have a large estate to manage. So that's the control node, that's the node Ansible is installed upon and Ansible manages remote devices. But next we will have a look at the managed nodes which is the managed devices that Ansible manages. And these are managed nodes and these can be the network devices and servers that are managed by Ansible. So these can be firewalls, switches, routers, servers, storage devices, anything, anything cloud based amongst pretty much any computer based system Ansible can manage. And on this slide we will have a look at the inventory file. Ansible needs to know about all of the devices it needs to manage and for this it has an inventory file which is a list of managed devices and you'd use a list or group of lists to group these devices together. And devices are typically given a group name and then devices are defined within that group so we can see on the right hand side of the screen you give your devices a group name so I've given it a group name of switches and then you surround this by the brackets the square brackets on the left and the right and then underneath that you just give it the host names of the devices or you can even specify it by IP address as well so I've got switch 1 and switch 2 under this group name then eventually you use these group names in your playbook and we will talk about playbook shortly and that's really it with group names. Now you can make many of these groups and you can put devices in them and you can even put the same device into multiple groups as well. For example, you might have an Ubuntu server and you might put the Ubuntu server into a group called Ubuntu operating systems and then you might put the same Ubuntu server into another group called application servers for example. So you can put one device into multiple groups. And even further, you can combine groups as well and give it a group name. So for example, we may create a group for switches and firewalls. We've already got a group for switches and firewalls on the right hand side of the screen. So we can combine these two groups and call it networking, for example. And you can also use ranges to define hosts like a range of numbers. So here on the right hand side, we have defined four lists and we just need to reference them by the names of the lists. And the names are defined within the square brackets. So here I've got the switches, firewalls, web servers, and database servers. And if we use the group name, switches, for example, in our playbook, it will affect the two switches here. So you can reference the names in Ansible when creating playbooks, which we will get onto shortly. And by default, this inventory file lives within etc Ansible host directory. But you can create other project specific ones and locate them where you want them. Looking at collections. Collections are the new way of providing very useful reusable content. With collections there is already pre-built tried and tested content out there that has been shared by the community that others are using in their environment. So people can use collections to do certain things rather than creating their own from scratch. And Ansible provides collections through the Ansible Galaxy website. And the content for you to use inside your Ansible playbooks can include things like provisioning your infrastructure or deploying your applications or even simple things like backups amongst all kinds of other daily tasks. So by using collections or another name for it is content collections, it's effectively a package of useful stuff which is made up of a combination of playbooks, roles, modules and plugins and we can see on the right hand side is a screenshot of collections on the Ansible Galaxy website and if we drill into any of those collections it will open up all of the stuff in there. So you can see within these the modules and collections you can use on your Ansible management server, your Ansible control node. So you don't need to create anything from scratch, there is pre-configured content for you to use out there. Moving on to modules, which is a subcomponent of collections. You can uh, usually, when you uh, download collections, you get the modules within it. So the collections is a package. But with modules, Ansible runs on Python and is built based on Python scripts. The scripts are called modules. So these modules are Python scripts. So the modules are the piece of Python codes that perform a specific task. 
and Ansible comes with lots and lots of modules such as networking modules, stories, database, monitoring, utilities, Windows specific modules and so on and many other vendor specific modules to support many vendor devices such as AWS in the cloud, other cloud services, Cisco, NetApp, Juniper, VMware, Windows and the list goes on. And there's lots of uh, modules out there, it just depends on the vendor and uh, which modules have been created for which vendors. You can also go to the Ansible website to download more modules or you can do this right from the Ansible command line as well. If you don't specify a specific module then using Ansible, Ansible defaults to a module known as the command module. This is the default module. Command module directly runs the commands you type and you can use it to run commands on the remote system. And on the bottom right of the screen we can see some of the modules Cisco provides on the Ansible Galaxy website. The top one is to configure part of BGP routing and then running iOS commands which sends commands to the iOS node and returns the results read from the device. And then we got gathering information from a Cisco iOS device. And the last one is a module to configure layer 3 interfaces. So you can execute individual modules on remote hosts to perform ad hoc tasks or you can execute modules through playbooks. You can use a single module with something called a task or you can use several different modules in a playbook. We'll cover tasks and playbooks next. Next we will have a look at tasks and tasks are actions to run your code and it's really calling an Ansible module to do something. So you'd create tasks as part of a playbook and they would run sequentially one at a time. For example, you might have four or five tasks against all of the hosts within a playbook. Maybe a task to ping all hosts and the ones that respond, another task to set up NTP on them and then another task to configure DNS on them and then another task to back them up and so on. So you would configure tasks for your tasks basically. Uh, for your requirements and we could include content collections as part of a task which I will explain on the right hand side of the screen very shortly and multiple tasks will run sequentially from top to bottom so here are a couple of example tasks it starts off with a task name the top one is to configure an interface and the next one is to configure a host name now we need to include something known as collections so it understands the request or understands the commands within the tasks or better put understands which modules we are calling upon to run as all the heavy lifting is done under the hood within these modules as already explained they are python scripts and the modules are held within collections so we add the collections to the tasks here and then we specify lines here which is specific to cisco which is an instruction to say the ordered set of commands that should be configured in this section and the commands under the lines are the exact commands that you would type into the CLI as if you are configuring that Cisco device locally. And finally, it's followed by what we want to do, which is to provide a description and an IP address for the interface, the things that we actually want to change on the interface. And parents is interface Ethernet 1, which identifies the interface to be changed. Parents basically means to identify the section or hierarchy the commands should be checked against. We'll get into the notify command when we talk about handlers next, but these commands, parents and lines, etc., I've taken these off the Cisco website. And the second task is to configure a host name. The collection is added here, so it understands the call to the module that we need to run under the systems. And the third is the host name, and the name is my Cisco switch. With handlers, on some occasions, we need a task to run only when a change is made to a device or to devices. For example, we may want to save the config, but only if a change is made. And for this, Ansible can use handlers. Handlers function just like a task, but called upon by a task. Or the correct term is when it has been notified by a task. They help make the playbook more efficient. same handler can be called upon by one or more tasks but only runs at the end when the tasks have been executed and it only runs once and changes have to be made for the handler to run on a task definition the keyword notify identifies the handlers that the task wants to notify and if the task is executed and reports a changed state then the handler will be marked for execution it runs as a secondary action upon a task making a change if we look at an example on the right hand side of the screen 
after we configure the interface we have a notify command called save running config to start config when modified so rather than having a task to save the config when it has been modified across lots of Cisco switches we just link it to a handler and here we can see the handler with the same name used on the task to call upon the handler and the handler itself just looks like another task it's more effective this way and the configuration is a lot more cleaner next terminology is players we can have multiple players inside a playbook and players start with a host command which defines which hosts will be impacted by this play so when we have a larger project and you want to section things out you can have lots of players within a playbook and then specify the hosts and tasks within each play but you can get even more efficient than this when working on even more complex and larger ansible configurations and you can use the include command to point to other files which includes players or tasks for example you may want to point to a file with some common tasks within it something like running lots of verification commands like checking interfaces are up so it may be more efficient and a lot cleaner for your configuration just to link to an external file rather than adding all those commands to the current playbook or you may have a complex set of tasks to install something which is part of a play and you can just link to that external play as well on the right we have an example showing the hosts and the tasks that will run against the hosts so switch one will run these two tasks configure interface settings and configure host name and switch two will configure the same tasks configure interface settings and configure host name but with the different values for switch two and then you can have lots of these plays for example plays to configure the web servers you can have load balancers to load balance the web servers firewall rules to permit traffic through the firewalls and so on and let's move on to the next slide which is the playbook itself and finally playbooks are yaml files and they comprise of an order list of plays and tasks or you can see it as instructions to configure the infrastructure devices a playbook is what the players handlers tasks collections modules roles and so on are typically tied into so the playbook provides repeatable reusable way of using tasks to manage the infrastructure devices so you would typically use playbooks to manage your infrastructure devices and all your tasks and everything else would all fit into this playbook and the playbook is made up of one or more players in an ordered list running from top to bottom and each player executes part of the overall goal or objective of the playbook and it runs one or more tasks that also run from top to bottom and as I've already mentioned each task calls an Ansible module and a typical example use case is when playbooks use multiple players to orchestrate a multi-service deployment and running one play for each service so for example dedicating a play for your web server farm and then another one for your application server farm then database server farm then another play for your load balancers to balance your load the traffic load on the web app and database servers another play on the firewalls to permit the web app and database servers traffic to access other devices and a play for configuring your routers and switches and you may have lots of other players these are just examples and each player consists of the tasks and the hosts it will run the tasks against and again you can also link to players and tasks from other files which comes in handy when managing large infrastructure to avoid your playbook from getting too large or too complex and on the right hand side we can see the basic structure of a playbook all yaml files regardless of their association with ansible or not tend to begin with three dashes as we can see at the top here and end with the dots as we can see at the bottom here this is part of the yaml format and indicates the start and end of a document also to bear in mind white spacing is important in yaml like it is when using python so just to summarize the playbook the playbook is a list of plays you've got all your plays in there you've got your handlers you've got your collections everything is linked into the playbook and then you run your playbook and that's how you manage your infrastructure devices and finally for the last slide although ansible is quite relatively simple to use it's still a very powerful piece of software and there's so many things to learn like anything nowadays so some things you should invest time into reading about further are 
Ninja 2, which is a template file. It's a template file, so it stores variables that can change when required. So when you run a playbook, the variables within the template get replaced by actual values defined in the playbook. And it's just it just provides efficiency to create or alter configuration files very easily using templates. Facts, variables and conditions. And this is where you can gather facts or variables about a system. This is basically information on a remote system such as the operating system, so the type of operating system. And then you can specify a condition based on the information gathered. So it's really useful. Loops, you can use loops. So instead of writing a task multiple times, you can use loops to execute the task multiple times instead. So it makes the configuration file a lot more cleaner and yet yeah, loops are a great thing to use. The become keyword allows you to become another user. So this is very useful for when you need pseudo privileges, for example, on a remote system. Ansible Vault, which encrypts variables and files so you can protect sensitive content such as passwords or keys. Therefore, it protects it from being visible as plain text such as in playbooks or roles. So again, Ansible Vault is another very useful feature to protect your passwords or keys. Another very useful feature is the task debugger. Ansible offers a task debugger so you can fix errors during execution instead of editing your playbook and running it again to see if your change has worked. So this lets you fix errors during the actual execution of the playbook and you don't need to stop the playbook and edit it and run it again. So it's really useful as well. And last but not least is tags. So with tags, you can use tags to run parts of a playbook instead of running the whole lot when working with very large and complex playbooks. So all these are very useful features to use. So you should uh, get to grips with them if you're using Ansible and you want to become a lot more familiar with Ansible. And that's it for this video on Ansible. Thanks for watching.